Hello, dear friends, dear guests, uh, welcome. Uh, I am sorry uh, for uh, the delay of the start of the symposium. Uh, I hope we can make it up during the day. Uh, I am sincerely very happy to welcome you today here to the second edition of the symposia series Actors, Agents and Attendants, Social Housing, Housing the Social. Actually, our research has started in uh, 2009. Uh, as SCORE is, a, is a, a welfare state establishment, we wanted to research the fields that we are uh, uh, traditionally active, like uh, healthcare, social housing, urban transformation, or uh, education. And these fields actually are the uh, prime sites of uh, market-driven transformations in the governmental policies. Uh, our uh, actually first symposium, uh, speculations, uh, speculations on the cultural organization of civility, was realized again here in Felix Meritis last year. And uh, uh, we focused on the relation between art and healthcare uh, within the current transformations uh, of welfare state. Uh, actually, uh, this June, 10th of June, uh, the state secretary, Halbe Zastra, uh, announced the new policy uh, of arts and culture in the Netherlands. And uh, 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 it enforces actually a radical shift in the funding system uh, uh, in Netherlands and it anticipates a, a massive impact uh, on the whole ecology of arts and culture. And even this fact really shows that uh, such kind of uh, researches like the one of this symposium is uh, inevitable and much urgent. Uh, for this symposium, this year's uh, symposium, Social Housing, Housing to Social, uh, in order to include different perspectives and ideas uh, into the uh, formative stage of our research, we invited uh, curators, artists, uh, uh, filmmakers, and uh, uh, activists uh, to uh, work with us as our research group. And uh, from the beginning, we have been talking to them, uh, uh, developing ideas, they are uh, really giving their critical insights to, uh, uh, to our program uh, in terms of content, format, or the participants. Uh, besides the uh, research meetings, we have realized two research platforms. And uh, uh, we invited additional uh, participants from the field, the professionals uh, from housing corporations, or uh, citizen groups uh, that, uh, 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 that create self-organized solutions or experiments. And uh, uh, we also look at the uh, potential of art in the, uh, in, uh, within this uh, uh, transformation. And um, of course, uh, both the uh, outcome of the research platforms uh, both research platforms were integrated to the symposium program. Also, the members of our research group, uh, they uh, actively took part in the organization of this symposium, uh, either curating uh, uh, the case studies, two case studies are curated by our research group members, or participate as moderator speaker. Um, Also, uh, as a prelude to the symposium, uh, we organized a film program uh, that is curated by Yael Messer and Gilad uh, Reich. And uh, 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 films and documentaries were screened in different locations in Amsterdam. Okay. 
Today, we are here to reflect and discuss the theoretical and practical aspects of social housing together with the broader conceptual questions on the uh, uh, housing, the social, focusing on the increased, um, increased er erosion of the state in this field. In the light of the withdrawal of the state, we will discuss the self-organization, self-help models, and proposals for alternative economies, and we will specifically question if and how these experiments can be extrapolated to the society at large. Within this frame, we bring together case studies and debates from varied and uh, maybe opposite perspectives, disciplines, and practices, as well as uh, contrasting geopolitical regions like Turkey, Serbia, Palestine, or China. Bringing these different realms and geographies together, we aimed at creating unimaginable, maybe impossible, short circuits to spark different positions and new ideas for the field. The two days of the symposium have been put together to highlight these different methods. There will be individual presentations, case studies, and debates during the day, and performances and more informal discussions in the nights. Within this research for this symposium, we have three artistic collaborations. We invited two uh, artist collectives, Chito Delat and Ultra Red, to collaborate and uh, uh, come up uh, with uh, a proposal for uh, the uh, symposium. They uh, have been making workshop with, uh, uh, vo with a volunteer group uh, uh, in the last two days, and hopefully we will have the opportunity to experience the outcome of their collaboration. Another collaboration uh, happened in uh, between uh, the artist uh, Maria Pask and uh, cultural anthropologist Nazima Kadir, uh, uh, to, uh, together with uh, also uh, a volunteer group uh, to experiment communal living, uh, and they created a sitcom uh, in the uh, framework of uh, Casco's uh, long-term project, Grand Domestic Revolution. And uh, this sitcom uh, is co-produced by Casco and SCORE, and it can be uh, seen tomorrow at Casco in Utre uh, through the RTV television. And we will today show you a very short uh, uh, trailer of the film to give you an idea. Maybe tomorrow you have possibility to uh, see it. Uh, the last uh, collaboration is actually between SCORE Amsterdam Fringe Festival, Netherlands Theatre <coughs> Festival, and the Netherlands Media Art Institute. We invited Yes Men to make one of their Yes Lab workshops to train the artists, the activists, and residents of a specific neighborhood in Amsterdam who have an ongoing court case with a housing corporation on uh, rental issues. However, since the outcome of the workshop uh, is proceeding right now in real life, uh, I won't be able to uh, give you more information. <laughs> However, I hope uh, you can uh, do the follow-up through our website uh, uh, in due course. Uh, the special spatial organization of the symposium is designed by Studio Missan Berlin and uh, includes a workstation at the back of this hall for immediate postings and bloggings. And uh, social housing, the social, that blogspot.com is the digital platform set by our collaborators, the editors of 
the meant uh, periodical. There are uh, related articles in the in the last issue of the Mend magazine, and all of you have them in their in your uh, bags. Uh, Hereby, on behalf of SCORE team and board, the co-curator of this symposium, Andrea Phillips, and our associate curator, uh, Vesna Madzowski, I would like to thank to all the actors, agents, and attendants of this symposium, that means speakers, participants of the symposium, research platform, uh, uh, research group, and also the, uh, the volunteer group for Chita de Lat and uh, Ultra Red uh, uh, collaboration. Uh, I want to uh, thank all of you very much. And uh, also, I would like to extend my thanks to our collaborators, the Mand Periodical, Casco Utre, Amsterdam Fringe Festival, Netherlands Theater Festival, and Netherlands Media Art Institute. And um, I also would like to thank to my colleagues, the SCORE team, uh, uh, without their endless energy and efforts, I think uh, this event uh, was not possible. And finally, I would like to thank to all of you to come here uh, to think with us, to discuss with us uh, the uh, social housing and housing to social. And uh, right now, I'm giving the floor to the chair of today and my co-curator, Andrea Phillips. Thank you. OK, I'm, I'm going to give you a little bit of context for this. Um, uh, much of what I'm going to say is um, a condensation of the introduction essay that you have in the folder that Fulio and I wrote together. So um, uh, a more extended conceptualization of our thinking um, and the way it's been influenced is contained within your folder. Um, OK, let me go to my first slide. Um, interviewed, by, uh, interviewed in the Social Europe Journal in mid-August this year, the sociologist Zygmunt Bauman was asked if the UK's summer riots were in large part caused by the ghettoization of people in British council estates. Bauman's response exactly describes the political basis of and rationale for our symposium. Noting the evident relationship between the government's withdrawal of commitment to social housing provision in the UK, this is known as council housing, but of course what I'm talking about is also um, endemic across Europe, and wider questions of social spatial belonging, Bauman said, successive British governments stopped building council estates a long time ago. They left the spatial distribution of population, complete with its troubles and problems, entirely to market forces. He continued, condensations of disprivileged and deprived people in certain areas of the city, not much differently from the case of the favelas, is not guided by social policies, but by the prices of housing while being aided and abetted by the tendency of better off sections of urban dwellers to lock themselves up away from city troubles in so-called gated communities. He carried on, segregation and polarization in the cities is today the result of a free and politically uncontrolled play of market forces. If the state policy makes its contribution, then it does so only in the form of the governmental refusal to be bothered with the responsibility for human welfare and its decision to contract it out to private capital. The riots in London, Manchester, Birmingham and elsewhere, and I live, quite, I live in Hackney, so Hackney is a, an area in London where the riots took place, so I kind of have first-hand first -hand kind of noise experience of what went on. So the riots in the UK um, this summer were not organized by articulate and collectivized activists and protesters, yet, in my view, they were equal in importance to those current occupations of Wall Street, the London Stock Exchange, and the Amsterdam Bourse. 
What struck many commentators when they interviewed people about the riots was the, um, the fact that when asked why they were looting and burning their own neighborhoods, so not the neighborhoods of the rich people that were living next door to them or um, in a gated community a little way away from them, um, the, teenage, the mainly teenage rioters did not respond with clear anti-governmental or anti-consumerist statements. Rather, they expressed themselves in action through the goods they were taking high-definition televisions, Nike trainers, cigarettes, Coca-Cola, etc., i.e. a combination of luxury goods and goods that give people immediate gratification. Mirroring back, one could say, a poverty-stricken version of the antagonistic and public display of excessive wealth accumulation by bankers left uncorrected in the wake of the credit crisis and still ongoing very visibly within our communities, this riot was recognized by Bauman and other people as what he called a revolt of frustrated consumers and the mutiny of the humiliated. This. I suggest, is the context within which we talk about social housing policy today. We are delighted, as Fulia has already said, to um, have so many critically important, experienced, and um, esteemed sociologists, philosophers, historians, artists, architects, planners, housing developers, and politicians with us speaking today, and also we are equally delighted by the fact that we have an audience of participants made up of professional and um, volunteering activities and organizations that we hope, we hope you will very much contribute to our discussion at the points when it's possible, and I'll talk about those in a little bit in a minute. As Folio has indicated, and as Sigmund Bauman explains, we believe that the crisis in social housing should not be isolated from a broader public debate about the roles we all have in the development of new forms of social work, forms that must emerge through the current culture of capitalism. And one of the real questions that we have today, which I'm sure we won't be able to answer, but we want to carry on our qu questioning, is how indeed new forms of invention can emerge through capitalism, through the, the state of monetization that we live within that feels at times like it's impossible to get from underneath. This may mean having to have difficult conversations about our roles and values, conversations where we must bridge our different specialisms. There are many people with different specialisms in the room today, and acknowledge different knowledges, conversations that we hope will begin to emerge over the next two days. We speak, of course, of a European housing crisis, but the infrastructure of our context is global, as Folia mentioned. <laughs> Firstly, because the types of provision proffered decreasingly in the West are non-existent in other parts of the world. But also, as housing provision is woven into the fabric of contemporary monetization itself, affecting the lives not only of those whose livelihoods are dependent on the, um, uh, uh, not, not only people who can't afford to pay their rents and mortgages, but also people whose lives are dependent on the uneven returns of transnational trade and its capitalization. So there are a number of very complex ways, in a sense, economically, that we can understand housing provision to be networked through the world. Increasingly, we're reminded that a house is not simply a home, not a place for sociability and communication, but an economic and thus speculative machine, a fact made very evident by 2008 subprime mortgage-induced crisis. We are also reminded on a consistent basis that a house is an individual and thus individually financialized unit rather than a cooperative, collective, or shared amenity. In this way, the privatization of our life space matches the general privatization of our intellects and emotions, I would add. Thus, the idea of social housing, of a house as a fundamental and therefore basic building block of good civic life built at a communal scale has been eradicated, as Fulia also mentioned. In this context, how can we not only rethink the social in social housing, but develop practices that remake it? Here, the question of art's role 
in such a process emerges. Obviously, in the context, context of, a, uh, of a symposium organized by SCORE, the Foundation for Art and the Public Realm. Artistic, architectural, and curatorial initiatives over the past five decades have variously depicted and intervened into this unevenly developing urban condition with, I would say, mixed results. And I think we have to be honest about this. On the one hand, exemplifying a romanticized ideal of nomadic homelessness and urbane aestheticization. On the other hand, developing discrete, practical interventions in particular communities and situations, artists, architects, planners, and curators housed spaces for social activity in its widest sense, from city-scale community commissions to temporary shelters for small performances and invisible acts of citizenship. A shared language of interdisciplinarity and social commitment must be utilized in order to get these projects done in many, of the, in many ways. Yet, the same initiatives often fall prey to the flexible and market-friendly ideals of new versions of public-private housing, which I hope we will discuss today, and are unrealistic about the lives and long-term needs of users, rendering the same projects neither sustainable or realistic. The welfare state, its funding policies and its treatment of artistic and creative activity as a separate domain from the social life produced many ideas that we are now already missing, already working through a mourning process about, one could say. One of these is a political commitment to equality of access to social support. Another is a commitment to cultural funding given in relative freedom, obviously. Those kind of commitments are, are very Western, very, belong very much to a conceptualization of the welfare state, which we can possibly now historicize as a very short period of Northern European time. But it also produced, this is the welfare state and its ethos, a certain, certain patterns and typologies of action, of ways of acting in the public domain. In the field of art, this has become particularly apparent, apparent as people and organizations struggle to stay afloat in the new regime of selective privatization. Arts, putative and singularized autonomy from the rest of the field of social production, so long defended by artists, curators, and commissioners, a product of the modernisms supported by the welfare state, needs to be examined closely now. This is one of the goals of this symposium. Often in recent creative rebrandings of urban space have artists been employed to decorate and ease into place marketized housing schemes. Often curators have collaborated with architects to produce reinforcements of their own roles within the given situation. Yet forms of collaboration, what, what forms of collaboration can we invent that adjust this kind of model? adjust the regular relationships between what artists do and what housing designers, commissioners, and planners do, for example. How can we think and practice the relation between art and housing differently? What are the different forms of making at stake? And how can they connect in new ways? Making art, making buildings, making social spaces, making civic life. How can we reassemble these ideas and practices? in public. As Bauman realizes, the bucolic time of neighborhood is long since past, and with it the rosy view of social housing as an idealized community bereft of antagonism, competition, and contradiction, perhaps really a social housing that never in fact existed. Yet Bauman, like other commentators, recognizes the absolute poverty and inequality wrought by capitalism in inner cities as elsewhere does not simply affect the quantity and quality of cheap housing provision for those unable to pay, but it also affects the very core of the idea of its provision. Young people in the UK this summer not only demonstrated physically that we live in a world of private privilege in which their rights to civic space are increasingly eroded, but in the form of their riots, acted out that privatization with the destructive energy produced by its psychic effects. I really like this image it's, it's because it's 
a Google image, and therefore a supremely low quality. It has a kind of um, a painterly patina to it, <laughs> I like to think. In this context, what does it mean to reclaim the concept of social... Isn't it great what Google does to images? <laughs> In, the con in this context, what does it mean to reclaim the concept of social housing as we're trying to do over the next two days? If, in other words, the very idea of a missing sociality, a missing social realm, um, brought about by, the inve by inventive, collaborative and generous exchanges between groups of people in the name of good living is buried so deep that we can only recognize it is missing when a riot flares up, and even then, those rioters are called, both by police and government, criminal and feral. This schizophrenic privatization of the soul of people, spoken about eloquently actually at last year's Actors' Agents' Attendance Symposium by Mark Fisher, is at the heart of the difficulty of reclaiming, firstly, the importance of social housing provision, and secondly, the broader concept of housing the social, the two things that we're trying to bring together today and tomorrow. We hope the next two days will become an opportunity to rethink our roles and partnerships. The people we have invited to speak come from a variety of backgrounds, as you will see, and as you can read in your folders, and hold very different positions. For Fulia and myself and the team at SCORE, however, the instigation of this debate comes from the practice of working with and through the materialities and modalities of artistic practice. And as such, this is our question. How should making, commissioning, and distributing contemporary art respond and adapt to, in the light of both the politics I have attempted to describe with the help of Sigmund Bauman just now, and the discussion that we have over the next few days? In your bags, I hope. Am I right? Have you all got a map? Yes. Good. So in your bags, you have a piece of visual evidence, a map which um, has been um, uh, organized, designed for us and um, organized as part of an ongoing series produced by the Association of Housing Corporations in Amsterdam or in Holland. Um, a, a map by Jeroen van der Veer, apologies for the bad translation, which shows a 2007 um, catch of all the housing provision in Amsterdam, all the social housing provision in Amsterdam. It is an extraordinary... <laughs> it is an extraordinary um, picture, in fact. It, it kind of, it looks incredibly generous, um, but we know that it masks contradictions, ambiguities, privatizations, etc., etc. This is a kind of one of the starting points for today. We thank Jeroen very much for facilitating that for us. Um, today is a very packed day, as you will notice, and we're already running late, classically. Um, we've got lots to get through. We have some extraordinary speakers today, and you will notice also that the way in which both days are organized, um, we have some uh, longer discussions and talks in the beginning of each day, and in the afternoon we have um, some collective and collaboratively curated case study sessions in which we're bringing together a number of different examples of practice to talk about how they contrast and how they work. Um, I will be chairing today so I will introduce each speaker in turn rather than doing it all now. Um, we have built in to this um, the, these two days, spaces and times where we really hope that you will contribute by, through questions and statements that you have from your own practices and your own ideas. Um, inevitably, in these symposium, when one organizes them, there is always a real um, antagonism or, or pull between wanting to give out lots and lots of information um, produced and, and provided by brilliant international speakers and providing space for discussion within a large group of people. So please bear with us as we try and give you as much as possible and try and find space for you to talk as well. Um, around you, as Fulia mentioned, we also have bloggers and we have some live video that's going straight to YouTube and we have some various different kind of 
formats in which you can also contribute. If you just want to sit and listen and you don't particularly want to ask a question, we understand that too. So please join in. Um, and in the evening and at lunchtime, we're all here, we're all in Felix Miritus together in order to develop the conversations. So if you don't feel like you want to stick your hand up or, and grab the microphone in one of the situations, in one of the moments where you can ask questions, please feel free. I haven't checked with the speakers yet, but I'm going to say this anyway. Please fee feel free to grab a speaker and ask them in those times as well. Apologies, speakers. Should have asked you about that first. Okay. Um, having said all that, um, Don Mitchell, our first speaker, is going to say it all much better. Um, I'd like to introduce Don Mitchell. It's a real privilege to have him here.